Hello, good morning students. Please subscribe the channel, drop a like, share and comment. Today's transcription number 472 of Sir Kailash Chandra's volume number 22 on the speed of 120 words per minute. Start. Madam, with regard to free and compulsory education, I would like to say that the states which are giving free education have not realized and the center also has not realized that merely not charging fees does not mean giving free education. The cost of textbooks, the often changed textbooks, the cost of paper material and the compulsion about using paper and pencil or paper and ball pen right from the primary stage, the cost of uniforms, the cost in respect of games fees, all this comes to so much that the words free education become a mockery. It is much better to say that the government is not giving free education. The same is the state of affairs about scholarships. I went to a district headquarters to find out what information could be passed on up to the village level about the various scholarships and facilities available right from the centre to the state. And you would be surprised, madam, that the central district authority of the place or even the headquarters authority of the place is not at all aware that there are scholarships available not only to the sections of students which I do not want to repeat but also to the children of the defense personnel and the children of the railway personnel. I can say here that one can almost challenge the education ministry to produce an overall picture within a week's time and show what are the requirements of compulsory education in the whole country as far as funds are concerned and how much is being spent. I come to the point of lack of coordination. The education ministry does not know that there are very many scholarships today open to children of the personnel employed under the various ministries, for example, the defense ministry, the railways, the labor ministry and various other ministries of that type. Only if all those resources are pooled together and a complete picture of educational expenditure is taken, will they be able to say what expenditure is being incurred, what facilities are available and what scholarships are available. I would therefore like to say that it was very heartening to hear only this morning on Doordarshan that the Prime Minister had reiterated that there would be no reduction in the expenditure on health and education because these are very important organs of development of a nation. Time and again we are assured by the government that there will not be any curtailment in the expenditure on education at the primary stage and on women's education. But if you look at the budgets made available to the Social Welfare Board, to the National Council for Women's Education and to various other agencies too, you will find that there is drastic curtailment. What happens is that as the policy goes on changing every couple of years, people lose all confidence in the government's sincerity about delivering anything on a long-term basis. I would refer to one example and that is about the policy originally determined to train midwives through the health ministry and the social welfare board. The health ministry had assigned this task to the social welfare board and later on it was found that there was not enough employment potential and the scheme was withdrawn. I would therefore point out that not only it is necessary to have coordination in matters of development 
of defense production but also it is more essential to have coordination in important matters in the six ministries that is labor railways health community development agriculture which ministry was also training gram sevikas for the spread of information about nutrition and the education ministry which has the social welfare board etc it is also necessary to have coordination about the cinema i mean the information and broadcasting ministry people do not realize what an important part that ministry is playing and can play in regard to education also that ministry does not know what havoc it is playing because it is very lenient about censorship and for what for fear of the high courts taking them to task through some decree against them let them do whatever they like but i am quite sure that the high courts will not go outside the constitution which gives them special powers even against article 29 and others about the freedom of expression and all that therefore the information and broadcasting ministry should realize that visual education through films which depict crime and all other things is very harmful to young immature and juvenile minds and it should take the advice or coordination or help of the psychological experts and of the education ministry and decide what films should be shown and what not after all you cannot carry on propaganda of one type and expect the country suddenly to produce citizens of a model type i would refer to another matter and that is where also coordination is required it is about the ministries of mines and fuel and commerce and industry